So if you want to have a crystal plate or a glass to drink water in, no problem. Platinum is a bit extravagant, but no problem. Gold and silver, haram. Why? Because the hadiths, and you can read the hadiths here, indicates that this is totally prohibited by the Prophet ﷺ, and that whoever does this would drink and eat in hellfire, fire with it. So this is something that is a serious thing, not to be taken lightly. I travel a lot, and I stay in five-star hotels, usually. I'm not paying, people are paying, so alhamdulillah. And when you eat in restaurants, they serve you in silver, and sometimes gold utensils. You can see the stamp on it. And this is why they serve you with it in the restaurants, not in your room service. Because people would take it and put it in their bags and kiss the baby good night. So what's the ruling on eating with it? It's haram. In some hotels, you ask for green tea and they bring you the, uh, the jug or whatever they call it, uh, um, the, the teapot. And it's silver. You can tell by the color. And you ask, is this silver? I said, yes, sir. I said, no, nope, change it. It's haram for you to consume in it. And the hadiths are crystal clear. There is no uh, acceptable difference of opinion among scholars on this because we rely on the hadith. A lot of the Muslims say, what is the reason? Akhi, you're not entitled to ask for the reason. The Prophet said it's haram. End of story. I can give you five or six justifications, but would that mean that this is why Allah made it haram? No, unless we have evidence that it was haram because of this, we cannot simply say, yes, surely it's haram because of one, two, three out of my own reasoning and logic. So the Prophet prohibited it, والسلام, we abide by it. Now, one would say, okay, is this just for eating and drinking or we can use it for other things? What do you mean? See, people usually uh, don't eat in gold and silver utensils because of the hadith. But what about if I simply have them as souvenirs? Sometimes I enter rich people's houses and they have a plate of gold, a jug of silver, and they don't eat and drink in it. They just simply use it. Sometimes they use it in wudu. It's a different uh, or it's an issue of dispute among scholars. The most authentic opinion, as Sheikh Ibn Ithimeen and other scholars said, that the prohibition is only to eat and drink in gold and silver utensils. Using them in other means, such as washing or keeping things in it, this is not haram. Yet, if it's extravagant, one should, one should avoid it, and avoiding it just to be safe is a better option. Okay, what about in the old days, now alhamdulillah, when we read such things in the books of fiqh, we seem to say, what? It, it doesn't make sense to us. When we find in the books of fiqh, the ruling on drinking or eating in utensils that were welded with silver. What is this? It means that if a vessel is broken or shattered and we weld it, fix it with silver, is this permissible or not? Most of us will say, why the trouble? Throw the thing and buy a dozen for the price of welding it with silver. This is true nowadays, but we don't know how difficult it was 
to make such cups, vessels, utensils in the past. So welding it with silver is an op was an option. In the future, we would not know whether we would need this option or not. Allah only knows. So we study it just to know. Welding a container, a vessel, utensils with silver when broken is permissible because this, this was in the hadith of Anas and it's in the, the Sahih that the Prophet had a cup that was welded with silver. It is, there was a, a crack in one side of it and it had to be welded with silver so that it can be used. But welding it with gold is totally prohibited. Why do you differentiate between gold and silver? Because the hadith that made the exception that exempted using gold and silver in utensils was in welding and it was in silver. So gold remains as it is prohibited to be used in plates, in utensils, in containers, etc. Either entirely or by welding it and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.